Hello everyone, this is um, Sascha Hasloff. I'm the artist director from Daikono Academy and also an international artist for Goldwell. And today I'm totally happy to have you here in our Daikono Academy. And I want to present you one of my favorite shapes we can create when we talk about classical shapes and we talk about foundations. And that's the typical halo haircut. So that means I want to create a convex shape, which means it's shorter from the uh, short at the front and longer at the back. But when I talk about that feeling, it's only at the base length, the internal of a haircut, we will create it the uh, opposite way. So that means by starting from the front with horizontal sections, which melts into diagonal sections to the back, I creating an, yeah, let's say an zero um, degrees graduation until more and more graduation until the nape. So that means in the internal, we are working with the opposite shape. So here we are longer at the front and shorter to the back. And now what I have done so far is I already cut the, the base length. This is convex shape. And now I'm going in to elevate each of my next sections a little bit more higher up to create that nice soft graduation and that it gives them all the nice round feeling at the end of the haircut. Perfect. And this is Courtney, you guys, from the Hairbrain team. If you ha have any questions, I'll pass them over to Sasha. So as you, as you saw, I start here with zero elevation and back to the side sections, I always started to go more and more in my elevation. And so you're the using the previous section as a guideline. Absolutely. As you can see it here, there's a guideline underneath and each of my section from the top will be connected to this. And depending of what my goal is or what my client wants to have, I always think about, okay, when I want to have a more round shape, then elevate the hair a little bit more. When I want to have the hair a little bit longer to the top, then I elevate the hair a little bit more less. And that creates the difference here in the shape. and gives me a lot of individual options. And do you prefer cutting wet hair over dry hair? Absolutely. When I start to create my basic haircut, then I always do this when the hair is, in, when the hair is wet. And afterwards, when we blow dry the hair, when we can see the, um, the fall of what I have created with the haircut, then I start with my finalization techniques. So to individualize the haircut, to give some a little bit more individual shapes or texture into it. So first of all, I always start when the hair is Wet. It's also easier to get an overview to my sections. I have to divide. It's easier to follow my steps of the haircut when the hair is wet. So now my next line. Now I start with an almost 45 degrees of elevation to get a little bit more into that graduated shape as well from the fringe or at the fringe. And if this were your client in the salon, how long would you book her out? Like 45 minutes to an hour? Yeah, it's 45 minutes. So because what we're saying is um, 20 minutes is the duration of a haircut. And that's why also we always teaching our um, staff um, that they are able to cut the hair in that, in that time. And all the rest, so that means the time I need for my consultation or for the blow drying or um, shampoo, um, shampooing, that's... Um, on top of this, so but the, the totally cutting time it's a, has a duration about 20 minutes or around. And that's also the reason why you see here I'm working with no sectionings. That's always what we are doing in our daily education work, that we are trying to keep all the things very very simple, that it, that all the hairdressers are able to create these haircuts in the daily business. So that means it's not only that we are focused on the, yeah, doing the process, pretty precise haircut. Sure, that have to be precise, uh, but at the same time we are always looking also at that we find um, economical ways, which let the, yeah, be the hair for, uh, hair hairdressers in the salon successful at the end. 
And you mentioned your staff, and I just want to acknowledge that we're here at your academy um, in Berlin in your salon space. How long have you had your own space? How long have you been, how long have you had your own, your academy in this space? Ah, here. Um, first of all, we, we started with a smaller academy. It was on the um, Wilhelm Street and in the year of 2005, we moved into here. Yeah, and now it's time to move again <laughs> because we found a space which is a little bit, um, yeah, let's say in a more modern area and also which has a little bit more space so that we can handle uh, more or bigger groups in our classes. Yeah, I'm really looking forward for that. Very exciting this year. And where are we now in the haircut? You know, now I come more and more into the nape area. And as you can see here, when I start cutting the nape, and I'm also following my head shape. So that means that I'm not only over there with everything parallel to the diagonal line, I always following also my shape to the, or my form parallel to the head shape to the nape, because I really want to achieve that very nice and round um, uh, feeling of it. So and that's why I'm really going into that head shape to the, to the nape. Mm -hmm. And that's also why I'm starting with my diagonal sections from the top and which is not only just a diagonal line, it's always that I'm following also with that line, my shape of the head, so that I really can work parallel to my section line and then automatically everything resides more round. And could you do this cut on a client that had um, curly hair? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think some of these um, techniques have to be changed then. So for instance, you can see here, I work with a lot of tension. Yeah? So everything is really um, yeah, combed with, um, yeah, with a lot of tension. But when, when I cut curly hair, then I'm more focused on the natural texture what she has. So that means I would work with the, with the opposite side of my comb. I would just comb the hair a little bit, yeah, slightly like this, so that the hair can really, really move in his own um, natural fall. And that's so for me one of the important um, um, things I have to be careful when I cut this kind of shapes in a curly hair. But you asked if, if I can, absolutely. I love that in curly hair. And we are here in Berlin for Goldwell, and you have been working on the trends for 2021. Yeah. How long have you been a Goldwell artist? Oh, that's a long story. <laughs> short. I make it short. So I started to work with Goldwell in the year of 2002, and then in 2003, starting to work as an artist, but in a national way. So and since 2005, there, um, I did my first international um, project that was in the past for uh, for Illumin, and then all the things was coming up um, very fast. So there was a lot of other project they are asking for me, and um, I'm totally happy to do this because I love to work with the international team. I love to work with all that um, people, which gives me always um, a lot of inspiration because all of us working different, and there are so much um, ideas from all the others. I really, really love that. Yo, that's really the, the reason why I do that. Working with other people, traveling and yeah. And have you been to the States? Uh, yes, I've been to the States, also for Gold Bell. So we had a, um, some years we had a presentation of our colors and collections over there. And I really enjoyed it, yeah, I love it. Okay. Especially California. Where it's nice and warm. Absolutely, I need the sun. So now you can see here from the haircut, I'm really, really in working in 45 degrees. So, and all the rest from my section, which is coming from the top now, I really work with that 45 degrees here in that area. But back to my next section, I elevate the hair and go slightly a little bit more down. So 
coming up from this 45 degrees that I really always be focused that I keep an eye that the length which I have created here goes slightly a little bit longer to the top of this so that my shape is always I'm focused on. So and for us when we're talking about education or when we're talking about our cutting philosophy then for us it's very important that we not only teaching for instance that kind here of a haircut we are also or we are more focused on that we uh, teach our participants that they understand why we do this haircut in that way because what we really want to achieve what i said before is that in the salon all the things we are teaching are variable and makes the Hairdress is more successful and for that for us it's not on only the reason that they understand the haircut, they have to understand the system, that they can work in the salon with that system individually because I think there are more than this haircuts they have to know to be successful and that makes them really working individual and that's also our, yeah, absolutely our philosophy we are following when we talk about our cutting system. So as you can see, I'm almost done and I'm always still at this section, working with the rounded section lines and then I just start to following my section line with parallel yeah, holding. And everything is connected to the guideline. And again to the back, just go slightly a little bit deeper. Um, and how big do you, would you say your sections are? It's um, what we are saying. It's always depending on the quality of the hair. If I have thinner hair, then yeah, it's okay to uh, that you take a little bit more of your sections. But if your hair is a little bit thicker, then use a little bit um, less from the from the hair because you always have to see your guideline underneath, and you always have to be focused in which elevation or which angle you have you hold your hair. You can imagine if I take all the sections and I just comp it, then some of the areas are cut in the right place, but some of the hair not because the elevation is um, or the over direction, for instance, it's too much. And that's why we are always saying it's one maximum one and a half centimeter, depending on the structure of the hair. So, and the last one, or almost the last one, I'm starting to. Oops. Connect everything. Also to the guideline. But as you can see, I'm not a little bit over direct everything to the to the to the side sections. Now I go more into the middle because I really want to have it more round also at the back. If I would just work here in my side sections, then I create like a triangle here at the um, at the back, and I really want to achieve more round feeling of it. And that's why I just switch my angle here. But still, I'm following my guideline. Last two, let's say. And is this shape something you're seeing a lot in the salon with clients? Uh, it, it becomes more, especially here uh, in Berlin. I see a lot of also young uh, girls who are wearing that kind of shape. But I think in total, it is one of the shapes for us as a hairdress, which is very important to know how I, uh, how I can create it. Because, um, as I said before, if I have this um, knowledge or the skills to cut this very nice and precise, then I really can yeah, do also other haircuts with the same technique, 
where the results are spelled different. But it's a very classic shape. Very classical for me, yeah. Very a foundation, let's say. Oops. Okay. So now, as you can see, I started with my almost zero graduation at the fringe, and then it becomes more and more into the side or in the nape area, more of my graduation. And so my roundness starts to come to life. So now the next step would, would be that I blow dry the whole haircut. And then I first of all start to create um, or to work in the internal of the sections. As you can see here, this very visible line in the internal, I would just elevate it parallel to the head shape and by working with a point cut technique, I make all this feeling of the flow of my roundness a little bit more softer. And that's what I do after my blow drying. And for this technique, I would start to blow dry the hair first of all with a small petal brush. And afterwards, I always using a round brush because for me it's nice, especially when I work with that kind of shapes, to bring out a little bit more the roundness from the shape. Yeah? So that are the two steps. And for today we already done this. So that means we just switch the heads quickly. Ta-da! We have prepared already. And here you can see what I mean. So everything is nice and round. And what I love on this haircut or also on the, on the texture of the haircut, that it really have that very slightly or easiness in the haircut. What I don't like is when, when you work with some, yeah, let's say too much products in it, when it's everything very glued or something. So I really love that when you shape the hair, that everything looks yeah, nice graduated. Yeah? So that means also for me, for my finalization now, I just go in, start it in the, starting in the top of the section, and elevate the hair parallel to the head shape. And only the tips, I just work a little bit with my point cutting technique. So that I'm still following my structure of the, of the shape and of the haircut. Because what I can't um, do, or if I would do it, for instance, I elevate the hair a little bit more like this, or keep out more hair like this in my fingers, and I go deeper into it, for sure I create more texture, but on the same time, I destroy the shape I have created before. And that's why I work really, really structured, and work only at the tips. and I just be focused also on the on the outlines and then it is and before we end where can everybody find you on Instagram where can they find you online yeah you can find us on Instagram with our name it's Mintels Icono Academy uh, Berlin um, or also on the internet on um, www.icono.de uh, and there's a, a, sl a slide on the on the bottom which means it's Academy and under this, you can find everything uh, from our seminars. Also, our online academy is there where we are providing all our cutting techniques, especially when we're talking about our collections. They are all also online. You can follow us there. And for sure on Instagram, there are all the news and everything. It's on. Yep. Yeah, and as you can see, so this very classical haircut, as I said, and what we are always following um, also in our philosophy is that we are saying we are working in two different um, directions. So one of the directions is that we are saying we want to inspire you as a hair hairdresser. So that means we are giving you some new ideas for haircuts or also for color techniques. But they are sometimes are more really focused on creativity. So it's more for inspiration. But on the other hand, we have the second um, direction, which is important for our um, academy work. 
is that we are always focused on what is important, what you need as a hairdresser for your daily business in the salon. So that means as I told, the haircut has to be done in a certain time or also all the other services we are creating and we are always um, yeah, planning a certain time to it that you are able to do it really in a successful way in the salon. And so in this both ways I think that makes our work and our philosophy also a little bit more special because it's not only the creativity, it's also that, that we really want to work on that point what makes you successful. So and then at the end, I just work at the outlines. And as you can see, because I, I have nothing done here yet, but as you can see, we created first of all our haircut without any elevation. So we was more focused on the outlines first. And then we started with the graduation by elevating everything. So and there you can see that it's not so much to cut now, it's just to clean it up a little bit in the way you love it. So that means you also can, for instance, cut a little bit more from here to follow more that roundness of the shape to the back. But what I really love is to keep it longer here and then creating it slightly or a nice round shape which melts into the convex shape from the face. So for that, I start at the back. And starting from the longest point into the shape to my shortest point. So from long to short. So what I mean, that would be a technique where we are saying that's more for the academy, creating that clean, very precise outlines. Because for the salon, I think that's um, that's not really so relevant. So I think when it is um, a nice line, then it would be enough. But here for you, when we are working with hairdressers, and it's always also that it's important to, as I said, inspire you showing you, you the perfection of it and that's why it takes a little bit longer for sure but that it's made for creativity for inspiration and not only for the for the salon because on this i can spend really i can spend an hour longer to make it very precise and very perfect But for the salon, I think it's not that necessary. Just to save the eyelashes a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think that looks quite nice. Yeah, as I said, I can spend hours and hours doing that. from the fringe. You can see here from here until here there's also a little gap in between. Not gap, the part which is a little bit longer.
So. And before we end again, Sasha, can you let everyone know where they can find you online? Yeah, you can find us um, online on our Icono site on, on www.icono.de and there you find um, our um, ac um, economy, uh, not economy, our academy um, way and there you find everything. So all our seminars, you find our online academy there and yeah, and all what you, what you need which is necessary to know about us. Perfect. Thanks so much, Sasha.